Endeavor. Hope you're ready for another day of hard work in the Milky Way. Good morning, Ken. Certainly are. And we had a few last night to boot. Well, Roger that. Things are going well, and uh, we will have the uplink mail for you here real soon. Uh, I'd like to pass along to John that that uh, wake-up music is a uh, special greeting from a vice principal of a school very close to home. Okay, Ken, thanks so much. I do appreciate that. Ken, please pass my special greeting. Will do. Deborah Houston, uh, Andy and Mark, we're with you in Space Hat. from the Space Shuttle Endeavor and Shuttle Mission STS-77. I'm Shuttle Pilot Kurt Brown from Elizabethtown, North Carolina, and at this moment, my crewmates and I are orbiting Earth at an altitude of approximately 180 miles. We'd like to take a moment to wish a happy Memorial Day to all the NASCAR racing fans attending the Charlotte 600. NASA and the entire crew would wish you all a very safe race. And with that, it's now race time, so... Gentlemen, start your engines. Endeavor, this is Houston. Are you ready for the event? Endeavor's ready. CNN, this is Houston. Please call Endeavor for voice check. Endeavor, CNN, good morning. Uh, you ready to go? Good morning, John. We're ready to go. Yeah, um, I want to talk about the uh, the inflatable antenna experiment with you because you were in a position to watch it pretty carefully as it came out. It was, of course, spectacular here on Earth, probably even more so up there. But some of the ground-based scientists said to us, it, uh, you saw the rippling across the surface of the antenna at one point, and said that might have meant it wasn't fully inflated. Give us your take on, uh, on how well it worked and, uh, and what those ripples might have been. Well, the, uh, the rippling may have, may have taken place during the inflation process. I think we'll have to wait till we get the data back on the ground and take a look at it. Inside the satellite that was attached to the antenna was a device, a video device, to measure the accuracy of that surface. And uh, so we'll have to take a look at that data. Uh, Andy was watching this from the space lab. Let, let me met, let him comment on this a little bit. Okay. Andy Thomas? Yeah. I was watching it. There were a few uh, ripples in its surface. It's not surprising that as it deploys and inflates uh, that it might pick up a few vibrations, and those appear to be uh, maintained in the surface. I suspect given long enough, they would probably all settle out and damp out. But like John say, says, we need to wait until we get the data back to see just how well it did inflate and how well the contour was maintained. But from my vantage point, it looked fantastic. It was a great sight. There was quite a show here on Earth, I'll tell you that. Tell me what the launch felt like for you. What went through your mind? What went through you emotionally? And what went through your body during the, the first eight or nine minutes of this flight? Well, obviously, John, it was a pretty amazing experience, certainly one of the most amazing experiences uh, that I've ever undergone. I uh, really enjoyed it, though, I must say. I was on the flight deck. And I had a mirror so that I could look out the overhead window during the climb out. I heard the engine start. I felt the vibration. I saw in the mirror the exhaust coming out the base of the vehicle. I saw a bright flash of light as the solid rockets ignited. Then I felt a jolt, and I saw the launch tower pass away, and I knew we were on our way. I, as we went up, I was uh, still looking out the window. I saw the earth roll away under us, the clouds recede, and... As we got higher and higher and faster and faster, I could see shockwaves forming around the vehicle and a red glow out the aft end of the vehicle. 
It was truly a great experience, one that I'll never forget. Andy, what's been the biggest surprise of the mission for you to this moment? Um, learning to function in weightlessness is a, is a big challenge. You'd be amazed at how easily you can lose things when you're weightless. On the ground, if you lose something, it just falls to the floor. But up here, it can go anywhere. You can lose things so easily. And I've spent some time looking around for things that I've lost. And it's just incredible how quickly you can lose things. CBC, this is Houston. Please call Endeavor for a voice check. Good morning. Mark Garneau, are you able to hear me? Yes, I am, Norma. This is a pleasure. Thanks for joining us. Who's with you today? My fellow crew member, Dan Bursch. Okay, thank you both. Now, Mark, you were lucky enough to earn a second ride aboard the shuttle. How did you win that honor? Well, I guess I just happened to be in the right place at the right time. In 1992, Canada was invited to send two mission specialists down to Houston to train uh, in preparation for the space station program. Uh, incidentally, there were also two Europeans and one Japanese astronaut uh, that came to work at NASA because of the International Space Station. And, uh, and my boss asked me if I was available, and I said yes. So here I am. I know in 1984 you brought up some classical music to listen to during the mission. What, what went with you this time? Well, I still have a lot of classical music, but I also have some uh, more modern stuff. Uh, yesterday I was listening to uh, some Van Morrison, uh, some uh, Crash Test Dummies, uh, Dire Straits. These are some of my favorite groups, and uh, I've got some other stuff, too. Fantastic. I hope you enjoy the rest of your mission, and I know we'll be talking to you next week in a news conference from space, and we'll be asking you about some of the Canadian experiments that you will be working on. Thank you very much. Pleasure, Norma. Endeavor for B. Carey, do you have a picture? Sure do, Mario. Good downlink. This is Mission Control Houston. This television uh, from Endeavor is a playback uh, showing operations uh, earlier with the vented tank resupply experiment. This experiment uh, studying methods of uh, venting tanks uh, in weightlessness. Venting tanks is uh, not easily done in weightlessness as air doesn't uh, accumulate in a single position as is the case uh, on Earth and under the influence of gravity. This experiment uh, explores uh, new methods of uh, having air accumulate uh, in a position where it can be vented uh, from a tank, such as a, a propulsion tank for a spacecraft. The view now is the uh, Northern California looking uh, up the coast toward the California-Oregon border. We do, Mario. Thanks.
Space at Park Endeavour for CFDF. Go ahead, Mark. Yes, Clay, before you go over the hill, I just want to let you know that uh, ampule changeout is complete. The CAN2 sample is in and ready to be processed. Copy that.